Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be playing through the tutorial for the Corvid Conspiracy, which just released yesterday as part of the Underworld expansion for Root Digital. So very excited to take a look at the Corvids here. Very fun and sneaky faction. Welcome, Initiate. Today marks your induction into the great Corvid Conspiracy, the true power pulling the strings in this woodland war. To succeed as a member of the Corvid Conspiracy requires careful planning and the utmost secrecy. Our foes will never see us coming as we spread our plots far and wide across the woodlands. During setup, our initial foothold in the woodlands is established by placing a warrior in one of each clearing suit. Man, can't wait, can't wait to uh, play Crows with advanced setup. Good thing that came with this expansion, because just having those three warriors and nothing else to start with is pretty sad. Now the games really begin. In Birdsong, you may spend a card from your hand to place one warrior in each clearing matching its suit. So if we spend a mouse card here, we then recruit one Corvid warrior to each of the four mouse suited clearings. In Daylight, we may take up to three of the following actions. Move, battle, plot, and trick. Let's start with what we Corvid do best, plotting. Also, I like that we're going up against the other bird faction in the tutorial. So in order to plot, we're gonna have to get rid of that Corvid warrior that's in there. So we have a variety of plots at our disposal. Extort the Eerie to improve our flow of cards. So we have four plots here. A bomb, when revealed, remove all enemy pieces in its clearing, then remove this token. A raid, when removed, place one warrior in each adjacent clearing. Extortion, when revealed, take a random card from each player who has any pieces in its clearing. While revealed, you draw an extra card in evening. And snare, while revealed, enemy pieces cannot be placed in or moved from its clearing. So we're going to go ahead and plot that extortion here. The Eerie can see a plot was hatched, but they won't know the type of plot until you choose to reveal it. Can I see the... Oh. Oh, he's peeking out. That was cute. Continue. So, plotting requires sacrifice. Your first plot of the turn costs you one warrior in its clearing. Each successive plot of the turn will require one warrior more than the last. So there goes our Corvid Warrior. Now we can use the move action to consolidate our Corvid Warriors into a clearing closer to our enemy. So we take a move. We'll just move that one into this clearing. So we now have two Corvids right outside the Eerie territory. Oh, we're going to do it again. Oh, okay. Going to consolidate. So a lot of the, the Crow's game plan is going to revolve around this uh, consolidating in order to plot because they recruit so spread out. And the, the important thing about that is that they have the nimble ability so they can move regardless of who rules their clearing. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't really be able to get much moving done because they're so spread out. Evening calls. With your daylight actions complete, you will draw a card and pass the turn to the Eerie. Get a nice sword card. Eerie. We're going to go ahead and recruit and take a very standard opening bird's turn. Build a roost on top of our extortion. Okay, so the... <laughs> So there weren't any birds there, but they made it easy for us to uh, extort them here since it's part of the tutorial. Your plots on the map, hidden or otherwise, contribute the suit of their clearing towards crafting during birdsong. So because we have one mouse plot, we can use it to craft this mouse bag, or this fox suited bag that costs one uh, mouse crafting. Next, you can reveal plots in your clearings where you have at least one Corvid Warrior. That's an important uh, thing to know. You do need at least one Corvid Warrior in the clearing to flip the plot. So start by revealing your extortion plot to steal a card. Each revealed extortion will also draw you an extra card in evening. Oh, when he pops out, oh he's tossing the coin, oh that's great. And he's got he's got little cards. Whoa, what was that? Is there a second, wait, is there a second crow in there? That seems like it's not supposed to happen, but he's got a little, he's got a little stack of cards. When you reveal a plot, you score one point for each revealed plot token on the map. Oh, that reminds me, what happens if I just click this guy? Okay. Favor of the mice. Finally, let's discard a card to recruit again. Do so now in mouse clearings. 
You know, I didn't actually think that the uh, tutorials would reflect my Eerie Emigre skin. Uh, that was the skin that they gave out to people who backed the Kickstarter for the Marauder expansion. I kind of just figured it would... I haven't seen the uh, regular bird models in a while. I kind of expected them to be in this tutorial. For your first daylight action, move your Corvid Warriors into the Eerie starting roost to prepare for new plots. So we've got two warriors here. I assume they're going to have us move both of them. Yep. I'm going to take a new plot here. Place a raid plot where you moved your warriors. If it is removed in an attack, you place a warrior in each adjacent clearing. Now that doesn't apply if it uh, is removed by exposure, um, which is a mechanic that I'm sure they'll discuss at some point. So next we'll remove two warriors to set a snare plot for the Yuri. Once revealed, it will stop enemies from being able to move warriors out of its clearing or place new pieces there. Uh, notably though, we can't flip this snare unless we move a Corvid into the clearing. So they might have us exert. Yeah. In the evening, you may skip drawing cards to exert for an extra action. We have more to accomplish, so let's do it. Gonna go ahead and take the exert option. We can move a warrior down to our snare to ensure that we have the warrior required to reveal it next turn. Yep. There he goes. Looks like the pieces are all in place, but before our plots hatch, we must pass to the Eerie to take their turn. And they're adding a battle card. What is this plot you have hatched near our roost? It cannot stand, I say. It must be exposed. Any time before drawing cards in evening, an enemy may try to expose your plot by correctly guessing what the plot is. As the cost to do so, they must reveal a card matching the suit of its clearing. Now, they are supposed to just reveal the card to you, the Corvids, um, but I think it has been happening such that it reveals the card to the entire table right now. I um, haven't had it happen to me yet because I haven't played many online games so far, but uh, just be aware that that is currently what's happening in digital. Hopefully that gets uh, fixed. If they are correct, you must discard your plot, ignoring its effect. If they are wrong, you get the revealed card, and they do still get a point uh, for removing that token. I bet you conniving Corvid lay a snare in our roost. Laid a snare. Wrong guess. So now, we get to hold on to their cobbler card. The squabbling Eerie fell for our bluff. Their guess is wrong, and we get to take their card. Yep. So now they have to take their move. Oh. Thought they'd, thought they'd battle our raid for sure. Oh, gotta show off it. Embedded Agents. An unflappable defense. Your Embedded Agents ability adds a hit to defending battles where you have a hidden plot token. Yep, so this is a, a bit of a... Um, oh, I love that little Corvid icon for Embedded Agents. Oh, and he pops out of the plot. The, the Corvids are so cute. Um, yeah, so the Embedded Agents is supposed to be like a little built-in deterrent to attacking your plots. Um, but in practice, like, taking extra hit doesn't really make a huge difference as long as you remember it's going to happen. So, yeah, it's kind of nice to have, but that in combination with the ability to have your plots exposed, uh, makes your, makes your scoring very fragile. We have nothing to craft this turn, so we skip to revealing plots. Reveal your snare to enable its warrior trapping effect and gain two victory points. Oh, uh, it's literally just a bear trap, okay. I didn't know if there was going to be like a corporate there standing next to it. Remember, when you reveal a plot, you score one point for each revealed plot token on the map. The more revealed plots you keep defended, the greater your scoring potential. Yep, and that's very hard to do with your low warrior count. Um, and you don't really have, like once those plots are already flipped, you, you don't even have embedded agents anymore, so it's a little tricky. Next, reveal your raid to score three points. Its effect only occurs when removed from the map, but revealing it is still useful for scoring. Yeah, when I first played the Corvids in the tabletop game, I was under the impression that you could not flip raids to score, you could only just have them uh, battled, and so I thought they were really bad, but um, that's not the case. Flipping raids is actually really nice. Oh, I like that animation. Uh, Flipping raids is actually really nice because sometimes people might not want to remove them because they don't want to give you more recruiting. Like a faction like the Lord of the Hundreds, which isn't in digital yet, which needs to oppress clearings. They might not battle that raid because you're going to be putting crows in clearings that they're trying to oppress. 
by being the only faction in there in that clearing and so they might not want to damage that raid or remove it and so by it staying on the board your other plots when flipped score more points recruit to mouse clearings oh he's very straight into the point all of a sudden okay we'll do that when placing a plot you must choose a clearing that doesn't already have one yep it is one plot per clearing place the bomb plot to see if we can make things go boom use your next action to consolidate your warriors Okay. This is um I guess there there is a a decent amount of mechanics to get through. It felt like it felt like I was into like the quote unquote free play section of the moles tutorial faster, which is kinda interesting. Finally we'll trick the Eerie into turmoil. Whoa! They're showing us the snare lock in the Corvid tutorial. Insane. So use trick to swap the location of your revealed raid and snare plots. So, do they have... Oh, they don't... How is this going to trick them into turmoil? Oh, because they put a... Because they put a bunny card in recruit. I'm so not used to people doing, uh... Suited recruits. So, yeah, they, they have to recruit in bunny. And we've just put a snare on their only bunny roost. So the snare will keep them from being able to move out of that clearing or recruit warriors in it. That ought to ruffle some feathers and send them into turmoil. So they're going to add a card to their decree, but they're going to immediately go into turmoil. The despot has failed us. Time to bring in a true leader, the commander. I'm not too sure I would agree that the commander is the true leader of the Eerie, but... um. Hey, I'm not complaining, since you are still playing against me, birds. Um, Alright, so are they going to just tell us to get to 15 points? We can't reveal our bomb plot because we don't have a warrior there, but don't fret. It's better to wait to reveal a bomb in clearings with enemy pieces to destroy anyway. Yeah, maybe. Um, there's, there's a question to be raised about, are people ever going to let you set off a bomb, right? If you have a plot in a clearing with a lot of their important buildings and a large warrior count, they'll probably just expose once to make sure it's not a bomb and then they're not too worried about it after that. Um, there, There's an argument to be made for bombing empty clearings and just flipping it for like four, three to four points and then it also comes off the map so that takes the heat off you, right? So they're not saying like, whoa, Corvids have five face-up plots, they're really scary. You flip that bomb, you get your four points and you plot another bomb and you can do it again next turn, something like that. It, it, you can score score kind of consistently without uh, getting uh, too much attention from the table. But um, I haven't played many Corvid games at the competitive level, so I can't speak to that. Them being in digital is going to help a lot with getting those reps in, though, so that's what I'm very excited about. So we're going to send our warriors out to the fox clearings. Don't want to craft those coins for points, you sure? Three points. With your enemy's leadership in disarray, it's a perfect time for a show of strength. Move your warriors to take the battle to the Eerie. I mean, I feel like we know that every faction can battle. But, uh, that's okay. Ah, right. What nimble movement you have. Like the Vagabond, Corvid mo warriors move regardless of clearing rule restrictions. Yes, we did not rule either of those clearings, neither the destination nor the starting point so that is normally an illegal move that the corvids can take because of the nimble ability now that you are in position it's time to fight okay let's go ahead and do that oh they're so angry dang didn't get the roost the roost is defenseless attack again to finish them off yep They're still so angry. And we get the defenseless bonus, even though we rolled a zero on an attack to get rid of that roost. Okay. You should be in a strong position to take it from here. Score 15 points or destroy enemy pieces with a bomb to finish this scenario. Okay, that's funny. Um, now, huh. What's going to be the more efficient way to do this, do we think? We've got plots in 
two mouse, one rabbit, one fox. I think we're gonna skip Xur. I think we're gonna take our cards here. Not very good ones, unfortunately. And so we need to destroy enemy pieces with a bomb. What do you think the odds are the Eerie move into that clearing next turn? Defenseless, yep. Goodbye, token. Oh, and it was the raid. <laughs> uh, thanks, Eerie. Oh, and we only have two warriors left in the supply. We're limited to 15, so we're only going to get warriors in uh, two of these clearings. So we'll do here, and we'll do here. Protect that extortion, why not? Um, so, I think our goal for this turn... We don't really... No, we don't need any of that. Um, in a real game, I'd probably craft code breakers, just because why not? Um, okay, so... There's a good chance they come battle this next turn. So I'll probably just flip it now and get the three points for it. Nice little bomb. Boom. I didn't get to see the full animation because I didn't react fast enough. My finger slipped on my mouse. Uh, action. Oh, right. I have no cords to recruit. Yeah. All right. So let's do... Let's do these two up to this fox clearing. And then we'll plot, we'll craft the sword next turn. What did we lose our, we lost our raid, so we can't do that, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so let's do that, let's do this. And then we will plot twice. So our first plot will be here. We'll say it's an extortion. And then we'll exert and take a second plot up here. Since this one is pretty uncontested, we'll say that's a, I don't know, snare. Uh, yep, and we have to remove two corvids for that. Now we finish our turn. We skip drawing. Three has to recruit. They've got to move, so there's a decent chance we don't uh, hold this plot, but We'll see what happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, we totally don't. Well, that's a shame. But we'll get to flip our other plot. So we'll have to take one more turn, I think. Because this plot's only going to flip for three. Oh, no. We can, um, we can flip for three and then battle for one. So. Let's, let's do a Code Breakers now. And we can check to see if they have any ambush cards. Um, once we get to daylight, of course. So no cards to craft. Let's reveal this snare. Get our three points. And now we need to take down one roost. So we can't actually check hand until... Let's do... We're already in mouse. We've got... We don't need to move, right? So probably more efficient to just battle away this roost, but we can check for an ambush real quick with code breakers. Uh, no, no ambush for them. And so we're just going to go ahead and try and battle this roost off the board. We've got four battles to do it, thanks to Exert. Yeah, so this should be the tutorial. I like that guy's little patchwork hood. Oh, it's the same one that this guy has. Cool. Um... Yeah, I, I like that they, they uh, distinguish some of the 3D models a bit. Oh, there was like a little derpy one in the back. <laughs> oh no, that's the ex that's the guy at the extortion table. Okay, I thought he was just like standing there awkwardly. No, he's standing there casually with his uh, with his coins. I love that Corvid background too. It's so pretty. Okay. Um. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty straightforward walkthrough of the Corvid abilities and mechanics. Um, I'm very curious to see how this faction does on digital, and I'm definitely looking forward to getting a lot of games in with them. I hope you are too. I uh, hope I run into some of you in some online games, and I'll see you in the next video.